It's about to get cold, friends. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you to talk about this Arctic invasion set to come through the country. Getting in the next week, we're going to break down the timeline of that. We'll show you the forecast on how cold it gets. And then at the end of the video, I want to break down what the polar vortex actually is. It's used incorrectly a lot of times. More often than not for clicks, but it actually is having a say in the weather this time around. We'll talk about what it is and what it isn't. Before we get into this video, if you do want to stay updated on the weather and just have that weather conversation, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button if you love the weather, and we will break all of this down. Alrighty, guys, we are going to start things off on about January 18th. January 19th, we're starting with the temperature anomaly. And where you see the purples and blues starting to pop up on the screen, that's what we're talking about temperatures below normal. The darker the purple and borderline white color that you see, that is the greater anomaly below what we should be again. So there we go, Intermountain West. Uh, that's where we really start to see this uh, blast of Arctic air start first. Upper Midwest, Northern Plains, but watch what happens as we get towards the weekend. Monday, January 20th, most of the country now under the influence of this giant Arctic air mass. And where you see that dark purple, that's anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees below what your normal temperature is right now. We'll take a look at some of the temperatures in just one second. And then this moves further east. So initially, Florida escaped some of this cold. But as you see there by January 21st into the 22nd, Florida also gets in on this blast of cold. Really, the lone spots to kind of escape it, it's going to be in the extreme western United States. But really, everybody from Idaho to Arizona and then especially east of the Rockies uh, in for this big blast of cold air. It tries to scour out by the 23rd, but it is going to be cold for quite some time. Here's the upper level pattern. We're going to start this thing on January 17th. And again, same deal with the anomaly. The brighter the blues and purples, the colder the air in the upper levels of our atmosphere. So here we go. You watch this area of low pressure develop around the Hudson Bay. It's going to be that closed donut hole, those closed height lines that you see right through the Hudson Bay where you see my mouse going crazy. And all of that colder air starts pinwheeling around that big chunk of low pressure. You can kind of see that closed donut hole now by the time we get to Monday, January 20th. And pinwheeling around that area of low pressure is all of that Arctic air that is charging in the Arctic as we speak, and as mentioned, we'll dislodge and head towards the lower 48 as we get into that January 17th, January 18th time frame. So uh, as we look forward to that, all those colors really don't mean much unless it has uh, some temperatures to go by with it. So really the core of this air mass enters the United States as we get into January 18th. So this is going to be early in the morning now, six, seven o'clock in the morning on January 18th. And you see below zero temperatures uh, in parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. That's the start of this air mass. Now, what we're looking at here is the actual air temperature forecast. So this is not the wind chill. It's going to be even colder when you factor in the wind. So these are actual air temperatures at the time we pause as we continue to go forward. Now we watch as we get into January 19th, this is where we really start to see the core of this cold March East. And I have it stopped here on the 20th. So you see how much colder it gets across the northern tier of the country. Great Falls, Montana, below zero. Willow City, North Dakota, we're talking 30 degrees below zero, 19 below in Fargo, 12 below in International Falls. But look at the extent of below freezing temperatures. We're talking about Dallas below freezing, Houston below freezing, San Antonio as well, down to New Orleans, Pensacola, that starts to get into uh, the nub of Florida and toward Jacksonville, and then eventually into the central Florida area as well. It gets even colder, though, as we get into Tuesday, January 21st. We have 40 below zero pegging on the forecast model that's 10 o'clock in the morning that's going to be eight o'clock uh, mountain time in willow city north dakota 40 degrees below zero 30 below in fargo just about 20 below just about in international falls and that cold pushes east east we're talking single digits in pittsburgh teens in philadelphia also new york city boston we are in the 20s and it gets even colder at 
in the East anyway, as we go into the 21st and into the 22nd. And it's not really until the 23rd of January that we start to see temperatures begin to rebound a little bit out of this latest round of Arctic air. And there's indications that we could even see colder air again, maybe not as cold as this round, but colder air start to sneak back in uh, in the last few days of January before flipping the calendar page into February. All right, so we're going to talk about the polar vortex because more often than not, especially... Uh, when you're looking at channels that are just in it for the clicks and in it for the hype, they use polar vortex every single time it gets cold and it grinds my gears. It's not accurate at all. Um, a lot of the times uh, the polar vortex is not really involved. It's just cold because it's winter. But this time the polar vortex is actually going to be disrupted. It's going to be stretched a little bit. And we're going to talk about what it is and what it isn't. So here's some facts real quick. Uh, it's an area of low pressure at both the North and South Poles. It stays there all the time. So it is present 24-7, 365 days out of the year. The thing is, it's the strongest in winter. It's weaker in summer. So it becomes a little more known to us. At least it can impact us more. We feel the impacts of it being disrupted a little bit more in the winter. And you see right there that last point, it can be disrupted and then send cold south or north if you're in the southern hemisphere. But we are, of course, in the northern hemisphere talking about this latest round. So here we go. And I have that disclaimer at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see that all on all scenes here that it is always present. So this is not some storm. A lot of times you'll see headlines saying polar vortex arrives in Georgia or polar vortex coming to Texas. That is completely inaccurate. It's always there and it's always near the poles. It's when it gets disrupted, though, that's when some of the Arctic air that resides underneath it at the surface can slip to the south. And we're going to go through that step by step right now. So again, the polar vortex is not the polar jet stream. The jet stream uh, divides, relatively speaking, the colder air from the warmer air closer to the surface in the troposphere where humans live. The polar vortex is in the stratosphere. It's 10 to 30 miles above the surface. So it is way above your head. It is way above where jet aircraft fly even. Again, the polar vortex, or the polar jet stream, I should say, is five to nine miles above the surface in that tropospheric layer, and we live in the troposphere, we as in humans, so you see that right there. Okay, so now you know what the vortex is. It's always there. It's like a little cap that hangs out in the stratosphere along the poles. When the vortex is strong or when it's stable, the low pressure in and the cold associated with it underneath are tightly locked into the poles, okay? We have stronger west to east flow. And more often than not, when you have that flow, it's on the milder side. Again, it's still cold because it's winter, but it's on the milder side. When we have any kind of uh, disruption, and we'll get to the disruption in just one second, here are some of the impacts uh, of the vortex being strong at the surface now, because that's what we care about anyway. Uh, areas closer to the poles are going to be colder than normal because the vortex is hanging up there, and that's where the cold air is. And then areas, the further displaced you are from the poles, like the south, deep south, uh, southern plains, California, uh, areas further away from the poles tend to be warmer than normal, kind of like uh, where we were a couple of months ago, back before we got into some of the cold to end December and getting into January. Now... This thing can be disrupted. So again, it's not going to visit Georgia when we get the cold associated with the polar vortex. It's not going to visit Oklahoma or Arkansas when we get that cold. But the vortex can be disrupted, something called a sudden stratospheric warming event. It warms the vortex itself, and sometimes the vortex can be stretched or uh, the warming can be so significant that it actually splits apart, and that's when at, we actually see some of the coldest uh, air when we have that vortex split, and then that colder air dislodges. But when you have that disruption of the polar vortex, the weaker low pressure uh, starts to push air southward a little bit. High pressure then settles underneath uh, that dip in the jet stream and then allows the cold to work its way further to the south, as you see it right there. Then we have the polar jet stream. That's the surface 
it's not at the surface. It's again about where jet aircraft fly, but where humans live, that's where we start to be impacted as the polar jet stream responds to that displacement. So again, the impacts with this weaker vortex, the colder air becomes south. Uh, that's where we see temperatures much well below normal there. You see that dip in the polar jet stream. Uh, then above average temperatures closer to the high pressure you see developing right there. So again, the coldest air on the planet hangs out where the polar vortex is. Every now and then, maybe once every other winter, typically we see that polar vortex split and then we get into some of that mean cold air that can really get far south, uh, disrupt crops, things like that, and uh, really send those wind chills to 40, 50, 60 below upper Midwest, northern plains. But remember, just because people say it's the polar vortex doesn't always mean it's the polar vortex. And make sure you're trusting your source. We are one of those trusted sources uh, here at Just Weather. And if you found all this content helpful, would love it if you hit that thumbs up. And hit that subscribe button. We are a great growing weather community here on YouTube. 100,000 strong plus. Thank you guys for your support. Love having the conversations with you guys. Uh, that's what makes this channel great. We are super active in the back and forth uh, in the comment section. Love posting or love seeing where you guys are watching from. And any questions you have, hit us up in the comments. We will answer them for you and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. Remember, it's going to get cold this time around. It is because the disruption in the polar vortex, 10 to 30 miles above your head. We'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.